Hey, good morning, everybody, and welcome to the vlog. We are in Utah, and we're at the airport about to head to Detroit. Okay, on the plane, ready to get going, head to Detroit, get to the Reptarium and BHB. Okay, off the plane, back in Detroit. Uh, so now it's heading over to the Reptarium. It's gonna be a busy rest of the day. Can't wait to see what hatched in all of those eggs that were hatching when I was gone. And we're back here at the Reptarium in BHB and I've got a bunch of snakes hatched while I was gone. Obviously it's the hatch season, five days gone. Uh, we're gonna get some eggs. So, But this first one was pretty cool. This is actually a het caramel bred to a spider het caramel. We actually cut that clutch of one egg. Remember when we hit a caramel? That hatched too, I'll show you in a minute. But this is the same exact breeding and guess what? Out of eight eggs, we hit two caramel spiders that's absolutely amazing and the interesting thing is sometimes caramels can have just a little bit of kinking issues with them with these particular ones that i've been breeding for years we really have no problem with kinking at all just perfect dorsals don't have any nub tails or anything like that absolutely gorgeous then we have a couple spiders that are possible head and we have a couple other eggs right here and guess what guys you're going to get a bonus one egg cutting here because there's one egg in this clutch that didn't pip out so we're going to see what kind of an egg we get here Let's go ahead and see what we have. Maybe we'll get another caramel spider or caramel. Weirdly enough, we didn't get any normal caramels in this clutch. Oh, no, looks like just, just a spider that will be a possible head. So we got a few spiders that are possible head for caramel. We got a couple caramel spiders and then it looks like just a normal possible head. So anyways, that's the first clutch. Absolutely wonderful. It hit the odds really well on that one. What the heck, since I mentioned it, this is that little caramel animal that hatched out that we cut the other day that was one egg. And look at, again, beautiful, no kinking issues no problems at all that thing looks absolutely gorgeous caramels and ultra males are really similar kind of an albinoish but still have a lot of tyrosine which is that kind of purplish dark melanin and stuff like that really gorgeous animal so that one egg hatched as well and then this next clutch was the last clutch that i cut just before we left for utah and there actually is a pastel to a fire bee so it's a pastel it's a fire and it's a spider and this of course is a little super pastel right here absolutely gorgeous remember i said i wasn't sure which ones were fire bees and which ones were super pastel well this one is definitely a super pastel right here now this one is actually a super pastel fire so this would be what they would call a super fly right here so it's got all the genes in it which is really cool that thing is gorgeous absolutely amazing then this little monkey here is just like its dad which is a fire bee which is a pastel a fire and a spider we've got a little fire here which is just the normal fire gene this is actually like a black eyed leucistic producer so if you breed fire to fire you can produce black eyed leucistics absolutely gorgeous we have a little firefly right here so again i realized that they look really similar but this is a super pastel here and then this is a firefly here which is a fire pastel they just have a little bit different head pattern a little bit different different color then we have a normal ball python in the clutch which uh, doesn't have anything but a normal which is interesting enough and then we looks like we have another little fire bee that just hasn't quite crawled out of the egg yet so again some beautiful snakes in this clutch then we have a big old clutch of pastel that was bred to a pastel scaleless head so again those scaleless heads and you can see right here this is a pastel scaleless head. You can see the top of its head right there is missing a bunch of scales. I tell you what guys, I think every single animal in this clutch is a pastel. How weird is that? No super pastels. Oh no, I take it back. There's one super pastel. Everything else is pastel. No normals whatsoever, but we'll see what kind of scaleless heads we have here. Looks like this is another scaleless head right here. Again, sometimes they're just barely missing a little bit of that scalation, so they're not too much. This super pastel here though, looks like, uh, I can't really tell. Gonna have to wait for this one to shed. It might be a scaleless head. It might not be a scaleless head. Uh, we'll just look right there at the bridge right there. If you see a little bit of jumbling scales, then we know it is a scaleless head. This is definitely a pastel that is not a scaleless head. There's no missing scales on its head whatsoever. Looks completely normal. Let's keep going and seeing what we have here. Another pastel that looks like it's just normal. I don't see any missing scales or anything really that unusual. On this little monkey, no real good scaleless heads where they're missing lots of scales, which is pretty interesting. Again, another pastel that is just a normal pastel, not scaleless at all. And it looks like another one that maybe is just a normal pastel, not scaleless. How weird is that? And then we're down to our last little animal here. We'll see what happens. 
another pastel not scale set. So it's weird, we got all pastels, one super pastel, and then just a couple scale sets. The rest were just normal pastels, which is really kind of unusual, right? But it's kind of cool that I hit the eyes and there's no normal ball pythons in here. Then the last python clutch that came out of the incubator that I just brought over were these spotted pythons right here. Again, you guys have seen me hatch children's pythons, spotted pythons, and Stimson's pythons. And you can see that the spotted pythons are a little bit of the darker ones when it comes to these. And these guys are absolute rippers right here. Really beautiful little guys. We only have a couple more clutches of the Antaracia, which is all of those little tiny pygmy pythons left. But uh, we had a really killer year with them. So that's it for pythons hatching. Let's go over and check colubrids. Really excited today. My friend Rhonda is back in town. James is with her, and this is of course where Snazzy came from. So Rhonda, welcome back. What do you think? It's been a Thank while since you've been here, huh? Oh, it's been so wonderful just to see how mellow and chilly he is, and I think he, re he remembers his mommy because he, he's let us do his old trick. And Oh, she you know that. <laughs> oh and the kissing the snake trick, and the and the armless hug trick when you stand oh, up. So oh, that's yeah. awesome. Well, Snaz has been so incredible. So for all of you guys that love Snaz, uh, this is where he came from, and we're doing the best we could do to take care of this little monkey. He's definitely a little bit tricky when it comes to eating. I ain't gonna lie about that. But nevertheless, good to have you back, and uh, we'll be seeing you over the next couple oh, days. All right, absolutely. cool, excellent. Thank you. And we had a handful of really cool Kaluri clutches. Let's jump right in right here. This is actually a blood red scaleless corn clutch and oh my gosh some of these things are ridiculous this is just a diffused corn right here that's scaleless that is really beautiful but right off the rip take a look at we got a couple animals here that are bonkers i literally don't even know what the heck is going on with these things because look at the color and the lack of pattern on the front of that snake right there it's almost like two different snakes right the front is like patternless with a big old stripe on it the back is like crazy it's obviously diffused really red looks absolutely incredible and then take a look at this one too not quite as extreme as the last one but still lacking a lot of pattern on the neck area i'll be honest i have no idea what that's representative i mean a diffuser blood Blood red corn typically doesn't have that. I've never seen another mutation where their neck pattern is vanishing like that, so maybe we have something new going on here. Nevertheless, that was a really great surprise. Next up, there's another blood red scaleless corn clutch, but this is actually a hypo blood red one, and we got some crazy stuff again. And just so that you have an idea, this is what basically a diffused corn looks like, a normal blood red or diffused corn. So this would be a normal here, and then we have some crazy, crazy scaleless stuff that is just out Outrageous. Again, this looks like a hypo blood red diffused corn snake or a hypo blood red corn snake. Oh my gosh. And it looks like we have a bunch more stuff. Look at this one right here. Oh my gosh. What in the world is that? That, I mean, I think it's a hypo diffused corn, but holy moly, that thing is crazy cool. Snakes are starting to get away. Whoop, 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 whoop. But look at these guys in here. There are some really cool ones. Oh, and this is actually cool, pretty cool here too. This is a hypo diffused corn that's not scaleless just to give you guys a kind of an idea of what it's like and look at we got snakes getting away over here i am going to be in trouble any second now going to go ahead and get these snakes in here get the top back on before they all escape so there's some pretty amazing things in fact, this was funny because this was one egg and this was actually the blizzard corn which is an albino charcoal corn bred to a blizzard sunkissed corn snake and uh, we had one little blizzard corn snake hatch absolutely incredible i know even though it's just one little baby lord's going to be absolutely happy because she loves blizzard corns. Then we have a whole clutch right here of Mexican black king snakes. Again, more Nigritas. Again, these are kind of like reptilian gold these days. Everybody wants Mexican black king snakes. And here we are, another clutch. I think this is like clutch number five or six that have hatched so far. But what absolutely beautiful snakes. Absolutely happy that we're hatching a bunch of those these years because again, they are so unbelievably popular. Again, I always say that if you want that like jet black snake, a lot of times you'll see an indigo snake which are the big black snakes that are kind of like kribos well this is kind of like the poor man's of that if you get my meaning they're absolutely incredible let's see what we have here okay this was actually a black motley scaleless corn snake that was possible head and uh sure enough it didn't prove out the head again just a bunch of little black corn snakes we had a clutch like this about a week or so ago the same thing where they came out all just aneurytheristic or black corn snakes no scaleless no motley none of that type of stuff but nevertheless oh he's a feisty little dude too are you guys okay and then the last kluber clutch that while I was gone was these right here. 
Oh man, how awesome is that? A whole bunch of Pueblin milk snakes. Oh my gosh. And let me tell you what, when these guys start to get going, they go all over the place. So we're gonna try to not get them too uh, upset. Oh my gosh, because again, once they start wiggling, there's no way. I'll be chasing these things around for a week, but absolutely incredible. Of course, they're just starting to go opaque. When these guys shed out, they're gonna be absolutely wonderful. They're Pueblo milk snakes, the tricolor that I think is probably the best starter milk snake, to be totally honest with you. Unbelievably cool. So there it is, guys. That's what's hatched with all those pythons, now all the clubers, and we have a ton more clubers that are due to hatch anytime. We got some ball python eggs we're gonna cut tomorrow, so those of you guys that have been missing the ball python cutting while we were away in Utah, that's coming up regardless. Uh, that's your update for baby snakes. I tell you what, it's exciting to be back, but I am so exhausted right now. But we're gonna go ahead and head over to the reptarium and get this amazing night started. We actually are open up tonight. Then later on, we actually have a movie event. We're gonna do Brian the Wild, a Q&A with me. It's gonna be amazing. Hopefully I'll have enough energy because I'm definitely not going on a lot of sleep. So let's go ahead and just open up the reptarium and see if that kind of adrenaline will kick in because of how awesome it is. I tell you what guys, as much as I love traveling and adventuring, being back at the reptarium, and it's my home base. I love it here. So as you're having a great time today, a bunch of people showed up. Gonna feed Elvis right now. We got some gator feeders going on over here. So uh, again, great to be home. Okay, back, just taking a break from the reptarium. Uh, what do you got going on? You brought me presents. I got you presents, because oh. you need you need presents. You work too hard. Oh my gosh, Rhonda's always so good to me. I mean, you're amazing. Thank you so much. By the way, this is the first thing. What? Tell me what this is. These are snake vertebra, oh and gosh. what's cool is if you watch on TV, did any of you saw Monster Boa right. um, on there? When they found that snake vertebra there, let me make it oh. bigger for you, because <laughs> it just slips, there you go. This is for a pretty big snake and it looks yeah. so small but the one they found I think was like this big oh so that gosh. that that megalodon had to be could you imagine as that wide as a car I can't you know I might be afraid of a snake that big okay yeah a little bit <laughs> I would be I'd like I'd like I do I wish oh god that might be related to feet Oh my gosh, look at this. Oh my gosh, Harry Potter. <laughs> oh my gosh, I can't wait to see these things. Oh I know gosh. we're going to be twins A's. Look at this, man. Now, oh my gosh. I don't think he's gosh. a Slytherin, but I'm a Slither flaw anyways. Look but at these. When you oh snakes, man. You just got to be a Slytherin. That Woo! is so dope. Oh my gosh, these are twinning. Twinning. Oh my gosh. You know what? Tomorrow is Sneaker Saturday. Oh yeah, absolutely. <laughs> That's uh, I always right. wear. I always wear cool sneakers on Saturdays. I love them. My gosh, look at that. That's so freaking cool, cool. Slytherin no, man. People have a doubt with oh you, like. my gosh. I now love this is them, for man. your other love. Okay, so this is my other love. This I don't is your know. Other if, love. I don't know what this is. And this like this I probably know about from. So what is this now? That's it's not a Sonoma thing. It, it, these are oh. these are some things that you know that you Ooh. that you like that not many people know about. Oh my gosh, I love this shirt, <laughs> Rhonda. Yeah, Holy <laughs> moly, that is the most dope shirt. I've had. That oh, this could be one of my new favorite shirts. Yeah. Oh my god. Oh my god, I love that shirt. Oh my god. <laughs> I gotta see this one though. That, that shirt, that's that's amazing. Bigfoot. Oh <laughs> Raining hide and seek champion. <laughs> I, I, I love that too. Oh my gosh, Rhonda, you're the best. I mean, you always know me. You always know me so well. <laughs> We're about 15, 20 minutes away from closing. We got Snaz out over here. Everyone else is just kind of still hanging out. How you guys doing? You guys all right? Good, good, good. Let's see what's yeah. going on with Bruce back here. It looks like a tarantula corner back here with Bruce. Yeah. Out over here. So uh, as we're kind of wrapping up the night here, getting ready for the next event, like I said, we're doing a movie night with a little Q&A. Should be absolutely incredible. Half of the hog was over here. Just uh, again, really an amazing night. And again, we still have a couple hour event to go. So again, 15, 20 minutes, we'll close down, and then we get started on the next thing. And we are closed. We got everyone just hanging out, eating some pizza. Gonna just kind of chit chat about like all kinds of stuff, answer some questions. Then we're gonna watch Brian and the Wild together. Uh, so you guys ready to get started? Yeah! I just really you know was so passionate about the message I was trying to get out which is loving animals you know trying to inspire people to do things that that most people don't
and movie night is coming to an end. Okay. Just hanging out here, it's about, I don't know, a little after 11 o'clock at night, just looking at some animals, just uh, chewing, what is this? It's, uh, can't remember what the saying is. Just telling stories and having a great time. So we're gonna uh, shut down the vlog. I hope that you enjoyed today. It's so good to be back here at BHB and the Reptarium. Have a wonderful day. I love your beautiful faces. Be kind to someone and I promise I'll see you tomorrow.